30 states require high schools to offer personal finance classes, but only 17 of them require students to take one of those classes in order to graduate. And one of those states is Vermont. That's where CNBC's senior personal finance correspondent Sharon Epperson went. Sharon, to look at one teacher's fight for financial education. And wow. Yeah, it is a while. You know, when I went there last week and I spent a morning with an inspiring and devoted teacher, I found out she's on a mission. Her high school has about 200 students from many different countries speaking more than 20 different languages. And she is ready to teach personal finance to every one of them. Students at Winooski High School are required to take a personal finance course to learn about money management before they graduate. How to build your credit applying for college and loans. How to write a resume or cover letter. You can have some fun with that. Courtney Ponquette is teaching them about earning, saving, and spending. And you're going to have to buy all of the things that you want. We also want to think about how long we have to work to pay for those things. Key steps in budgeting for what they'll need for their first apartment. You're going to have to buy your mattress too. A bill to make a semester-long personal finance course a graduation requirement at all public high schools in Vermont has stalled in the State House. You've been advocating for personal finance to be a standalone class that all high school students have to take in order to graduate. Why do you think that's such an important requirement? I see the impact every single day in my class. So every single day in my class, students are engaged, they're asking questions, they're bringing this information home, they're applying it to their own lives, and they're, they report to me that they're making better financial decisions because of it. And research shows Paquette students are not alone. Professor Carly Urban has studied the outcomes. When personal finance is required in high school, you see improvements in credit scores, you see reductions in delinquency rates, you see fewer payday borrowing choices, you see less reliance on credit cards. In eight states, all high school students are required to take a semester-long personal finance course before graduation. And 10 states are in the process of implementing that requirement. After taking this class, it has helped me to start saving my money and to start investing right now. Students in Winooski say that everyone could benefit from a financial literacy class. Do you all see yourselves as advocates for personal finance now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I would definitely. think so. It's one of the few classes that no matter what you're going to do, it can apply to your life in some sort of aspect. And it can help to improve your financial well-being, too. You know, many polls show that popular support for financial education definitely exists, but many students may not have access to personal finance classes. It may be due to budget constraints or other curriculum demands, but they need this education. And many people are looking for free resources. CNBC has them for mm. teachers, for students, for everyone to learn more about budgeting, saving, and investing, including a free eight-week newsletter. You can sign up for Money 101 newsletter at cnbc.com slash money101 or just use the QR code there on your screen. That's awesome. A great idea because I was thinking about sort of the Robin Hood and the retail yes. trader effect and a lot of, you know, high schoolers and th were trading stocks. But even there where, you know, that, that's just one aspect of personal finance. I mean, a lot of this is broad basic stuff, credit score. I don't know if they get yes. into that, but these are really important they things to know They absolutely get into credit scores, and that's very important to them to be able to build credit. They know how important that is, but they also know they don't have one yet, but they want their parents to have a better credit score. True. And they know the impact that that can have for borrowing as they're looking for college, to, toward college and toward other things after high school. So that is definitely a topic that was really of interest to them. And it is important to learn about investing, but you have to learn how to manage money day to day right. as well. And maybe even first, so that you then have that disposable income that you can put into investing um, after you've paid your bills. Anything, did they surprise you with anything in terms of the apps they were using or the, the kind of financial, the places they were going to meet their needs? Well, what really surprised me was the lesson that I was there to learn with the students, which is how do I pay for my first apartment, the mm. things that I want inside of that apartment? <laughs> how many hours does it take me to work? Yeah to be able to afford the mattress, the bed frame, the microwave with all the different gadgets on it because I want the top of the line. Right. And they were and they were strategic in saying, I don't need a desk. I'll just work at the kitchen table. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather get this gadget or this thing. So it was really interesting to see them work that out and and figure out how much money after tax income, because yep. they factored that into, which go. a lot of people forget yeah. about, <laughs> how much then is it going to cost them to buy what they want for their first apartment. So that was an excellent lesson that she came up with. Sim so simple and so powerful. So important. Sharon, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Sure. Sharon Epperson.